Hi, I'm Dr. Laura Bennett Cameron. <laughs> I teach at the University of Texas at Arlington, and this is Bassoonists Talk, and I'm here with my brilliant colleague. Hi, I'm Dr. Kayla Bellamy, and I'm just starting my first year at Colorado State University. Yay! So I'm going to talk with you today about um, getting the setup through GarageBand as a, uh, as a separate way of processing your audio for virtual lessons and, and hopefully some collaboration down the line. So um, Laura here has all of her equipment, but none of it plugged in, correct? That is correct. So awesome. what I have uh, today is my good old trusty, probably eight year old Zoom H4n. And I have a cable uh, that is a micro USB to full size USB. And that is all I have. And I think that's all I'm gonna need. And what are you transmitting on? Are you on a live? I'm transmitting on a MacBook Pro. Okay, so the walkthrough that is in the other video that we'll post for this um, that has the kind of microphone comparison as well as what you'll hear today is only with USB microphones. So you've got a, a Zoom one. I've got, let's see if I can do this without unplugging everything. I have a blue Snowball external USB microphone that I've got sitting several feet away from me. So hopefully you're not getting too much of you know, my my exceptionally brilliant diction at this hour of the morning. Um, so we're only showing you walkthroughs for um, relatively low cost point US plug-in microphones, so no interface, and everything's through a laptop. We just both happen to be on uh, Apple products. So this is all a walkthrough for how to do this in Apple. Um, yeah, and we have um, Professor Gabriel Professor Gabriel Beavers to thank for this. He did a really great full session with us that hopefully you have already seen um, about ways to use technology you already have, hopefully, and other technology that you might be able to purchase. And it's really great stuff and it's going to really impact the way you teach and learn via Zoom. Yeah, and we'll, we'll post shortly following this uh, a handout, a walkthrough of each of these steps, a combination of um, our previous interview and then also there was a, an article on Medium that walks through how to do this as well that I ended up trying to follow and it didn't work, but I sort of had a, had a hack around and found something that worked otherwise. Awesome. Um, so what we'll start with is your normal, you can go ahead and just plug in the Zoom external microphone as you're used to doing. Um, so what I had to do was I had to go into Zoom and select audio, USB audio interface when I'm connecting to a, um, to a PC. It doesn't ask me any questions, or it just pops up and asks, do you want to use as a USB mic? And you say yes. Uh, to connect to my Apple, um, I had to run through a few settings on the Zoom and on the Mac. Okay. So when you when you originally set, when you're going to set up your external microphone, if you're using something like this blue snowball, it's just it plugs in the drivers that since it's already it's only usable as a USB microphone. There's no selection that you have to do. When you have something like the H4n that you've got, it's got some like it's a multifunction recorder. When it's not plugged in, you use that just to record your lessons and record your practice sessions, right? So when you plug it into your computer, what did you have to do to have that recognized as a microphone and not a recorder? So what I had to do is um, I went into mode in the Zoom first, um, and I selected a USB audio interface, and I went forward with that, and it's showing me a very simplified screen. Uh, there's not much going on there, it just gives me the level, so that's super helpful. And then on my computer, I had to go into system preferences. Again, this is on the Mac. I clicked on sound, then go over to the input tab, which is the one on the far right, and I selected H4n. Then I closed out of sound, then I went into zoom, and then I had to manually switch my microphone over to the H4n. So that was and a now it's of those, those options yeah. for the microphone icon. Then now, now the zoom. Yes. This might be a little bit confusing because your microphone is called a zoom and we are also on the platform zoom. So we're, we'll yes. try to differentiate as we go through this. So all of that microphone so was with the microphone zoom. It was not with the platform zoom. Cool. So I have dropped in the chat now a link that is also going to be on the, the document that will upload to you that I pulled from that Medium article. It's a link to code on GitHub, which is just a, 
It's like a Wikipedia of computer programmers. So cool. it's, a, it's a bunch of free code, largely free code. So if you click on that link, it'll take you to code for something called Black Hole, which is a virtual audio device. And essentially what that does is enables your computer and the microphone and Zoom to all speak the same language. So it's sort of a, a translator for everything. Um, awesome. So this is where I made my first critical error when I was following the article. There, if you're looking at this page now, would you mind sharing your screen actually so we can see I what can that looks that. like? Mine looks like this. And so this is where I made my first error that you can see where there's an option for go to file and there's an option for code. The green one, green means go. That's what you want to do is click on download file, not go to file. If you go to file, it looks like this which is to my non-computer programming eyes utterly terrifying and i got sucked into a little bit of a hole the first time i did that so you want to go to download code and for yours it looked like it was right that i'll let you re reshare so we can see what's going on it looked like with yours it was right at the top yep i mean i had to scroll past like the you know asking for what is this and all that stuff but here it is Download installer, I'm assuming that's the, that's the thing. Yep. Let's rock and roll. Cool. So the installation is successful. So now go to your spotlight up in the top corner. And just like we've done before, you type in MIDI. There's a little icon of a, uh, yep, that guy. Open that guy. Do -do -do -do. And now you have this fancy new little thing that says black hole 16. Ooh the side that's actually okay. not what you'll use just because it's only it see that's only a an output right it's you have to choose between input output and there's all sorts of like 16 channel situation here so what you actually want to do in order to be able to get your information from the microphone and uh, it goes through uh, garage band and out through this black hole is go down to the little plus sign at the bottom and this is different than the article. I actually, the article suggests that you do the create multi output device. That didn't work for me. So I created aggregate device. There you go. And now you want to select your H4, which is the microphone that you're using under the in function. See how one says two out and one says two in. So this guy. Yep. So you're selecting that as your input and then select black hole 16. It's a 16 channel. You also, oh, on the same panel. Ah, yep, thank so you. Select that. And then on the option for a black hole, click drift correction. Where is that? So you see in, out, drift correction as the column. Oh, here we go. There you go. Yep. And so now that is set up to go into GarageBand. Those are the walkthroughs. Okay. Now that you've done so that, I can close this out now? You can close that out now. And you can open GarageBand. This is where the uh, the rubber will really meet the road because I feel like everybody's GarageBand has a different startup screen. I'm excited to see what mine is. And then while that's loading, would you tell me how much of that I need to repeat when I'm just wanting to teach a Zoom lesson? None. Super. So once you have done this, it's already set up. I was not positive that was going to be the answer until I logged on today, having tested it yesterday and all of my settings were still good to go. Hooray. Okay, what's next? So now click on empty project. And if, if to my understanding, you should be able to just have that like this, once this is your setup, you could run all of your lessons under the same project, unless you wanted to export individual audio straight from GarageBand. If you're recording the Zoom session, mm -hmm. then you wouldn't need to double export. But if you just wanted to export the audio file and you forgot to click record on Zoom or something like that, then you could do separate files. Okay. So you're already, so yep, the first option that's selected there is, is correct. The record using a microphone or line, wait, wait, don't click right yet. <laughs> under my instrument is connected with, Click on the little gray arrow next to that and select aggregate device for both of those input and output. So what this is doing is you can select aggregate device because your input is sort of like an extra daisy chain. You put the microphone into that aggregate device, your Zoom, mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. So it's going to receive from that microphone. And then the output will put it out through the, the audio interface to that black cool. hole you downloaded. Awesome. Um, I, I checked enable audio units. That won't make a huge difference if you're just doing the audio quality. But if you're doing anything like multi-track recording, or if you want to be able to adjust EQs or anything like that, the audio plug units are all like the extra toys. Okay, cool. You can use. So I want to inject it just so it's ready to go. So that's good to go. Awesome. You can close out of that. And now you can click create. Hooray. Excellent. So now if you go up to track at the top, and then down to configure track header, and then click on record enable. That allows you just to record the, the audio. For a while, uh, when I was testing this, I thought it had to be recording in order for the microphone to be exporting. I'm not entirely sure if that is or not. So I just have okay. a recording just for, for giggles right now, <laughs> I think. Okay. So cool. mine's been recording this whole time that we're talking, so I have a lovely audio. Oh, yeah. fun. So if you go, okay. yep. Yeah. Now when you, now you're set for that. If you want to go ahead and click record as if you're recording a new track, Cool. It should be, yep, you're receiving audio. If you speak or make some sound, does that register anything on there? Hello. Cool. So you're getting sound. Test, test. Awesome, yeah. If, once we get it, once we get that exported into Zoom, we'll be able to see if it, if you want to adjust the volume. But should you want to, the little, the, the little dial will input your left and right channels. It'll input, input out or change your volume. The big blue box down in the bottom there, that compressor, EQ, sends all of that, or like some of the toys. You okay. Can, if you're really into that. So that's the end of the GarageBand part of setup. So now you've got a sound, sound right now that's currently going out into the void. So if you go into your Zoom, and this is where it gets a little tricky because Zoom can't screen share its own interface. Oh, thanks. Hello. Hello. So now if you go into your audio setup, just like you normally have done to select your microphone, there should be an option under select a microphone now that reads aggregate device. Cool. So I've clicked the little up arrow next to the mute. Yep. Select a microphone, aggregate device, clicked. What do you hear? I hear you. Yay. That so we're not hearing a ton here. But if you listen to the, the audio, well, I should have had you play it soon right now. I can give you a little quick, quick demo if I have it set up on my end. I haven't played this read today, so we'll see what it sounds like. Oh, I have one on the instrument. Hooray. It's like I was ready to play or something. So now that all of these are set up, you can toggle back and forth between them. And it's a little bit easier to hear the difference. sounds like a bassoon it really does yeah, yeah. Like yeah. very nice clear non-laggy bassoon wonderful we love yes it. and so if i go in comparison so that's what mine set up as aggregate device that's running through garage band i've got all that rolling right now just for comparison if i go i'm going to turn on just the microphone my regular zoom or the the snowball that i've been using can you hear a difference in my voice no yeah, it's a little just less clear. A little bit. It's sort of the, I mean, you, you don't notice it so much, but when I start playing the instrument. It sounds nice, but not as nice. That's, that's very kind of you. If I go back to what was on just the computer, let the computer do what it will. Here's the computer microphone. <laughs> Yes, I'm hearing a lot of um, loud silence and less bassoon. Yeah, and my personal favorite is the long tone that turns into a statue. If you don't have, have you had that happen before? If you're playing long tones, and you oh yes, little sound, and you're playing a note, and then all of a sudden it's just like somebody staring at you. Right, it's always exciting. Yes, so that video side by side with the handout will lead you to what I have listed as step four on the handout, which is celebrate. 
and you have a, an audio export into Zoom that now sounds less, a little bit less laggy. It takes, it doesn't completely take care of a latency issue. So we can, we'll kind of explore that with some other softwares, but um, so still simultaneous playing is not a great, a great experience even with this high quality audio, but you can hear, I feel like you can hear a lot better articulation and you can hear a awesome. lot of the, the finesse, the smaller finesse things like vibrato, when vibrato is actually happening and it's being created by the person and it's not just like Zoom having a time. <laughs> yep. I'm excited. Yay. Yay. So tell me, so I booting up my computer and my setup for a lesson later today. What are all the steps that I need to go through to enable this? So to enable, once you have everything already created and set up on the back end at the, on the day of a lesson, you'll need to open GarageBand mm -hmm. and create, either create an empty project or continue a project that you've started before. So you hit that record. That way you've got this, the scrolling red. Mm -hmm. And it should be export, like it saves your export setup. Okay. So I closed GarageBand between yesterday and today, and I didn't have to go in and reselect. If you, if you go from an empty project, so if you don't save a project, that's like, I think what I'll do is save a type of project that's just called lessons. Okay. That has, you know, the correct microphone already set up. But if you're starting a brand new project for each student or for each day, then you will have mm -hmm. to change that. First thing we did, which is I select, I hear my, I receive my audio from aggregate device and I receive, I hear my instrument from. If you don't like okay. the aggregate device under your MIDI setup, you can name it something else. Fair enough. Okay. So just head into GarageBand, use the same project that I used last time. Uh, click the red record button and that's it. Yep. And when you open up Zoom, I just double check each time right before the lesson starts when it gives you the, do you want to test your computer audio or open up audio settings real quick, like, and make sure that I have the correct microphone set. Yep. Okay. And then cool. just, like, you can turn on or off original sound. So there's flip back on original sound. Okay. That is fantastic. Thank you so much. Yes. That was a, a, like, that was a, a lot of work for you to kind of put all of this together. So thank you for doing that on the back end. So, I mean, selfishly, I could just enjoy having someone walk me through this on my end. So thanks. I'm glad to do it. It's so